Welcome back. We're currently in the middle of a trial. We're doing some cross-examination here on writing on the ground. Because we're trying to prove the innocence of a policewoman. That we have no idea who she is or what the case is about. Because Phoenix Wright has lost his memory. Yeah. Not a good day for him. Not a good day for him. Or us, because we're him. So. We first looked into the handwriting. Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. Next, we checked the victim's pointer finger. We found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. There were also scratches on his skin that were caused by him writing on the ground. From this, we could confirm the victim wrote this name of his right hand to feel significant. Listening to this, you would think there was only one conclusion. That the name was definitely written by the victim. But don't you think that would be really strange, sir? If Justin really wrote that message with his right hand, do you think I would have gone through that much trouble to get him his present? The present? What about it? It's going to be left-handed, isn't it? We first looked into the handwriting. As always, you're going back around here, aren't you? Um, let's see here. Birthday present. Uh, that is right-handed, isn't it? But that's a right-handed glove, is it not? So what... I don't know. Oh, now I'm trying to think like, wait, baseball do you... Baseball do you catch with your strong hand or your weak hand? Since that's the thing, it's like we don't really do baseball in the UK. We do rounders, which no, we don't do nambi pambi baseball gloves, no, no, no. Just trying to think like what you would catch with like if someone was throwing something to me it's like would I want to catch with my right hand or my left hand I don't know because I'm kind of ambidextrous with several things so it's that sort of thing like I feel that's going to be the significance isn't it but it's just I'm not sure because I don't play baseball and it's not really a major sport here first looked into the handwriting unfortunately we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting next we checked the victim's point of finger we found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail there was also scratches on his skin that were caused by him writing on the ground. From this, we could confirm that the victim wrote his name with his right hand. I feel that that's, that's relevant to this because it's to do with the hand or that sort of thing. It was pointed out by Maggie, so... Objection! Detective Gumshoe. Take a look at this. That's the glove, right? Could you tell the court what is special about this glove? What's special? I've uh, never really thought about it, but... It's really yellow. Uh, that's about it. Yes, it's really yellow. But that is only one of its qualities. Huh? There's another reason why it's special. Uh, what would that be? It's very simple. This glove is made for a left-handed person. I mean, it's not, it's made for a right-handed person. Or, again, don't know baseball, it could just be the fact like, yeah, you use your right hand for the glove. Well, is it? Yeah, think about it. It's just, it's, if you catch with your right hand and your left-handed, you throw with your left hand, and that's going to be your stronger arm and stuff, isn't it? So, yeah. Left-handed? Oh, you're absolutely right. This glove is made to be worn on the right hand. That is why it had to be custom made. I've never seen a bright yellow left-hander's glove for sale, have you? Well, um... No. So, detective. Which hand did the victim use to write the name with again? That's easy. Look, it's obvious from the picture. Uh, that his writing is... Uh, uh, wait a sec. Don't forget that the victim was left-handed. Ha <laughs> ha! This is, that is, I mean, I have, I Overruled? Mr. Wright, I would like to know what your line of reasoning proves. There is only one conclusion that can be drawn. A left-handed person could not have written a message with his right hand. Therefore, the person who wrote the name Maggie could not have been the victim. Oh, this is quite clever, yes, yes, yes. left hand. oh, what are you? Order, order. 
When you think about it that way, then yes. It is not possible that this name was written by the victim himself. That means Maggie is... No. It's not possible, Mr. Payne. <laughs> yes, Your Honor? The evidence the prosecution has presented has failed to prove the defendant's guilt. In fact, I believe you have proven her to be innocent. No. <laughs> All right, you did it, Mr. Wright. Phew, I feel like I can breathe again. It seems that we have reached the conclusion already. You did a fine job once again, Mr. Wright. Me, Your Honor? Ah, well, thank you, sir. You got compl complimented by the judge again. You're really good. And that's why you can't give up being a lawyer, sir. You're joking. I'm more than ready to retire. I will now announce my verdict. This court finds the defendant Maggie Bride... Objection! Objection! Oh my god! No! Not yet! I, I mean, please, give me a few more minutes, Your Honor. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Payne? The prosecution is not finished yet. What do you mean? We would like to call our next witness to the stand. Uh, eh? Oh, this is very unorthodox. I wanted this witness... Witness. The moment of the victim was pushed to his death. What's more, he saw the very face of the culprit. What the heck? Oh, this is the face. I mean, it's size of... Order. Order in the court. I believe a recess is in order. Afterward, we will hear from this new witness. I had a feeling that this was a bit too easy. Hmm, I need more information. I have to see what I can find out during the re this recess. I let my guard down. I'm going to get tougher from here. Court is adjourned for recess. Oh, I think we did alright. To be continued! Uh... Nah. September 8th. 11.43am, District Court, Defendant Lobby. Number one. Uh, amnesia? I can't believe my lawyer is trying to defend me in such a state. I, uh... Why did you tell me, sir? I tried! I, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mention it to you. Oh, I, 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 I did. I did, I did. I, I, I know what to do. I heard you can fix something like this with a really strong shock to your system. On low your head, little... A Maggie kick should be all you need. I don't know, no. no. Uh, I think I'll pass on this one. Come on. Uh, I'm sorry. Whenever I see someone in trouble, I have a hard time leaving them alone. I just stick my nose where it doesn't belong and try to tackle everyone's problems. Oh, my head's one problem you won't be tackling today. Oh, we're here to solve your problem first. We can deal with mine later. For now, do you think you can fill me in on a few things? Of course. I'd be honored to. Hmm. Well, I, I guess we'll stop with my name and then I can tell you about me. No, no, that, that's okay. Really, I, I think I know you and your name pretty well by now. I was wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So my name is Phoenix Reed. What a weird name. Hmm, this is serious. You really don't remember. I'll tell you what, sir. You can have this back and maybe it'll help. This is... a business card? I got this from you. It's my most prized possession. You can borrow it for now, but please give it back, okay? Okay. There's some numbers written on the back. Oh, that's your cell phone number. Ah. Phoenix's business card added to the court record. Why? I guess for now, we should stop talking about me. And start talking about this case. This case? Yep. Can you think of anything that would be helpful for me to know? Um, what can I tell you? I, um... Hmm... I can't think of anything other than that instant with the cell phone, but... Cell phone? Yeah, your eyes lit up when we talked about it at the detention center, sir. Uh -huh, something important then. Hurry up, and, uh, uh, hurry up then and tell me, this might be very important. Okay, roger. 
Okay. It was on that day of the crime, just before 6pm. I picked up a lost cell phone while on a walk with Dustin. It's the blue badger. I see. All of a sudden, the phone began to ring. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give you this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. Uh -huh. We agreed to meet up at 6pm. Dustin and I waited for the person to show up. But they never did. Hmm. So where is the phone you found now? I gave it to you yesterday. Huh? To me? Is that phone in my pocket? Y you mean this? You think it has anything to do with the murderer? The murderer? The murderer? I don't really know, but my eyes lit up. Ah! You were here all along. You're so mean. Oh, hello. I called you a million times, but you wouldn't pick up. And when I went to check in the courtroom, everyone had already left. Hmm. Who the heck is this? Let me guess, I'm supposed to know this girl too. Hey, good morning, Maggie. And a good morning to you, Maya. It's a mayor, isn't it? May. Ah, May. Yeah, yeah. So, so how's it going? Is there a word from worse than abysmal? Oh, what if I said everything will be fine? That's right. It's Maya to the rescue with the ultra decisive, super important evidence. Here you go, Nick. The things you wanted me to bring. Huh? Oh, uh, d thanks. What the heck is this? What the heck is this? Who am I? What am I? A Liz? There's about 20 people's names and phone numbers written on it. It was kind of tough, but I managed to dig up some dirt. Looks like these guys are up to no good. No good, as in... There's a group of con artists the police are currently investigating. I think these guys are members of that group. Names list added to the court record. Why would a group of con eyes pop up in a case like this? Don't look at me. Hmm. Where did you get this list from in the first place? What? Don't you remember, Nick? You're the one who asked me to look this up yesterday. Oh. That's right. These numbers are in the memory of that phone Mackie found. Hmm. So that's where they're from. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. Hope I never get to be a forgetful old prune like you. Um, Mayor? Actually, Mr. Wright is... Mr. Wright, recess is now over. Please bring the defendant and return to the courtroom immediately. Oh, whoops. Guess you have to get going. We can talk about you being old later, Nick. Wish us luck. Guess I have all the pieces now. More or less. What that's left is to put it all together. I'm not going to lose this. I can't. Come on, Nick. Better get a move on. Y yeah. September 8th, 11.54am, District Court. Courtroom. Number 2. Oh, yes. I had a sandwich. Uh, court will now reconvene. Please call your next witness to the stand, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. But before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? It's about the next witness. He has a tendency to say things that rub people the wrong way, you say. So I said the court might be a little lenient on... There is no need to give a preface. Just hurry up and call your witness, please. Yes, Your Honor. The prosecution calls its next witness. A drifter who was... Taking a walk in the park on the day of the murder. Hmm. Please state your name for the court witness. Before I do, I'd like to clarify a little something. Huh? Oh, oh alright, go ahead. Just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps he is a drifter who was taking a walk? D did I? But I will not stand for that. 
Now you tinted the court's eyes and colored me wrongly. Sure, I suppose calling me. Alright, give it a little bit of a bit of a bit I cannot keep up with that. Yes, yes, I understand. I'm very sorry. I'll, I'll be more careful from now on. What is he? A human chatterbox? Uh, I have a. I have to question him. Fashion cars, women, glasses, and of course university. First rates only need apply. Glasses, but you aren't wearing glasses. Uh, hmm. That's enough. Your name, witness. Oh, is that how you want to play this? Using your power and influence to keep the young people down. I see how you work now. You old people and your dirty tricks. You thought you had me, but I thought wrong. Uh, I, I'm, so I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Oh, man. I forgive you, all right? I suppose I can tell you my name. I am Richard Wellington, the drifting virtuoso. You have a PhD in drifting, as it were. If you wanted to, you could call me a uh, university student in transit. <clears throat> Mr. Wellington, on the day of the murder, you were taking a uh, stroll, uh, stro stro uh, strolling through the park, right? It would appear that you are attached to that word. If you must, then by all means, I remind you that I am nowhere. Prepu prepubescent boy out on a walk with a mummy. If you must know, I am... Anyway, please testify the court which you saw during your walk through the park. See, you said it again, taking a walk. You know, you... What you witness will do, Mr. Wellington. What I saw that day. I was at the park all afternoon deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time at all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above right in front of my eyes. Out of thought, I looked up, and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Of course I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with a police officer. Banana. I have to press him on that. Hmm, that was certainly a decisive testimony. Decisive? Uh, Nick, did, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you have to say. How can you be so calm? Strange. My mind is very calm and clear. Maybe it's because I believe in my client? You mean Mackie? Yes, and if she really is innocent, then that can only mean one thing. That guy is lying! You may now question the witness, Mr. Wright. I'm gonna press him on the banana. I'll find out the truth, no matter how well you craft your lies. What I saw that day. I was at the park one afternoon deep in thought about my life situation. Don't care. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. Maybe if we don't have everything happen with the banana. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above, right in front of my eyes. I'd have thought I looked up, and there I met in the eyes of a charming young lady. Of course, I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. The banana? Well, it was actually more than just one. More like a bunch of bananas. Oh, what would a bunch of bananas be doing there? And why would I know such a thing? I'm only telling you what I saw. It's really strange. Mickey never mentioned anything about a bunch of bananas. That's it, Nick. He's gonna be lying about the bananas. Hmm, he could be, but... There's no reason for him to lie about there being bananas at the crime scene. What if it's not a lie? Well, maybe he thought he was seeing one thing and there was something else? Huh. If he mistook something else for a bunch of bananas, then that would be an inaccuracy. Think, Phoenix, think. My client is innocent, there's no way he could have seen what he says he saw, saw, saw what it what, says what he did. What? 
means if we can somehow show he's lying, yeah, that's exactly what we need to do. She's right. She's got a sharp mind, but I just wish I could remember who she is. Everything okay, Nick? Yes. I was at the park. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Banana. Right, present. The glove. Mr. Wellington. I believe I have the bananas you saw. Right here. Ah, so you knew about the bananas too. Why didn't you say so earlier? But don't think you can use this as a way to pull more information out of me. And that's where you'd be wrong. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Isn't that the baseball glove? Huh? <laughs> what? A baseball glove? Doesn't it look delicious? Care for a bite? <laughs> that's... That's not... It's a... No! Your Honor, I think this proves one very important fact. This witness... Uh, uh, this is this is the thing I like about the game. So that you can still pursue way the right way, and then still have no clue what's going on. It's like, he has bad eyesight, so his glasses were smashed. By the way, just how bad are your eyes? Huh? How? What? You, what are you asking about about all this all of a sudden? Your Honor, it is very simple to mistake a glove for a bunch of bananas. No, I don't think so. Objection overruled. <laughs> One of those people. Yes, you, you know what I mean. I like those people who are always off again. And that is why I asked you how bad your eyesight is. They're both 2200. Well, Alright. I suppose you're going to tell me that's terrible, right? Why are you not wearing your glasses today, then? Um, it's because I lost them recently. You see? Of course, I was planning on getting a new pair made right away. But you know, my glasses are no ordinary glasses, so to replace them. How about when you witness the crime? Were you wearing your glasses then? Did you just strangle yourself? How about it, witness? You're an unrelenting evil man. I like those people who always off again. Which boils down to you not viewing your glasses, view, wearing your glasses at the time. Therefore, the identity of the woman at the scene of the crime and that of the defendant cannot be proven to be by the same uh, to be the same by the witness. That's a fair point. I hadn't thought of that. I was just thinking oh, I was going to prove him to be the one. Because the glasses were smashed underneath. But yeah, if you can't make out the glove as the bananas, or the bananas as glove, you, you know, then he wouldn't be able to make out the face. But the height difference was only nine feet. It's very possible for him to see the face of the culprit standing on the upper path. Hmm, witness? Please be more accurate in your testimony. Remember a person's life is at stake? N yes, Your Honor. Now then, please continue with your testimony. Please tell the court what happened next, in the moments after you witness the crime. What happened next? Okay. The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as she realized I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. They must have a lot of free time on their hands, since they showed up within ten minutes. Hmm. So the person who was on the upper path saw you and then ran away. Yes, that is correct. Which is why even someone without a superior brain like mine can understand that. The girl is the murderer. You may question the witness now, Mr. Wright. Hmm. What happened next? Okay. The girl on the upper path ran away as 
as soon as she realized I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call, and that seems significant. I must have had a lot of free time on their hands, since they showed up within 10 minutes. I don't find anything out in the ordinary in his testimony. I'm gonna have to press him. Why don't you take one more look at the court record? Okay, so there's something in the court record then. Yeah, I guess I should. Tutorial one after all, you know, you know. Yeah. We're still pressing on everything, and the girl on the upper path ran away as soon as she realized I was there. She ran away. Just like that. Yes, she did. She saw me and flew the nest just like the guilty bird she is. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that pun too hard for someone who's only got a third of rate education? Actually, that did take me a few seconds to get. Anyway, if she ran away the instant she saw you, how could you tell it was my client? The witness has already answered that question. He has stated that the defendant is the culprit. This is true. Mr. Wright, I am striking your question from the record. Hmm, how can I get more information out of him? After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. I don't think there's anything I can get from pressing him on that. It must have been 6.45 when I made the call. That is different. How do you know what time it was? The detective told me. You know which one I mean. The one with the jacket that makes him look like a dropout from a no-name high school. Hey, pal. Graduated from a pretty good, I, I mean, top-ranked college. I don't believe this. It doesn't matter. I don't believe I was mistaken on what time I called. And if I am wrong, then that detective obviously doesn't know how to tell time. What? Why you, you just some lousy kid who? I think the court can see your point. Anyway, how did the police respond? They must have a lot of free time on their hands since they showed up within 10 minutes. Hmm. So you're saying that there were police on the scene by 7 p.m.? They got there before that, I think. There usually aren't many people in that area at that time of day. But suddenly, before I knew it, there were people crawling all over, gawking. It certainly says something about the morals of the people in this country. I don't find anything out of the ordinary in his testimony. Why don't you take one more look at the court record? Yeah, I guess I should. Okay, the girl on the upper path rises. So let's have a look here. Tony's badge, we've always got that. Separate. So Maggie found this in the park. She got it in the contact with the owner, but they never showed. Justin's autopsy report. Time of death, 9, 6... Hmm... 6.28 p.m. Paul's broken neck, but he was also covered in bruises. Not the police. Must have been 6.45 when I made the call, but if this, had, if this had just happened, that would be a bit later, wouldn't it? So, hold on. Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report? According to this, the murder occurred at 6.28 p.m. So what of it? You said that you called the police immediately after the murder took place. Well, for by the time you had called the police, it was already 6.45. There is clearly a 15-minute gap here. Do you deny it? Uh, I think this court would like to hear what you were doing during this 15-minute gap. I did it! The witness was in shock at the time after witnessing a terrible murder. It's only to be expected that he would be a little dazed. Objection! Fifteen minutes is hardly what I would call a little dazed. Uh. Mr. Wellington? Yes? Explain yourself. What were you doing during those fifteen minutes? Answer the question. I, uh, telephone, uh, I mean, spit it out. I, I was searching for a phone booth. A phone booth? You mean you don't have a cell phone? This is you and your questions. As if you're trying to open all the layers of a... 
Russian doll. Nice. Yeah. You must think you were really something special. Well, there was a there was a phone booth in the picture. If we have a look, it's like this. It's not difficult here. Is that, is that is that the one? It's right there. I don't I don't think you have trouble finding one. It's right in front of you. You know. Witness. Uh, I lost my cell phone. There. Are you happy? You lost it. Unbelievable. You lose your glasses and your cell phone. You must be very scatterbrained when it comes to your belongings. What? Are you saying that first-rate people are never allowed to lose things? Haven't you ever heard? Oh, he's off again. Enough. Oh, man, oh, man. Wait. Hold on a second. He lost his cell phone. Nick, that cell phone, could it be? I mean, this phone Maggie found. There's no way. Oh, yeah, I didn't see this coming. What should I do now? I should, actually, end this part here. And we'll see you in the next part when we clearly are going to question him further. So we'll see you then. Ta-ta for now.